This is uh, a herpetology walk, which is the fifth time we have done this, led by Kyle Lauchs. And Kyle is the Southeast Regional Coordinator for the Pennsylvania Amphibian and Reptile Survey. Uh, it's a citizen science project that's been going on since 2013. And what we are doing is collecting data on all the herp species, reptile and amphibian species that have been found and documented in Pennsylvania. All that data will eventually will lead to help with conservation efforts, um, determine what needs to be, what needs more help, uh, what doesn't need as much help. So if you look at the wetlands down there, I always look at that, don't look at that as a wetland, a muddy area with just skunk cabbage, which I love by the way. Look, think of that as a filter. All that stuff that comes through here is being filtered by those wetlands. And that's why they're so important, you know, important to the wildlife. We're in our ninth out of 10th year. I think okay, we finished next year, I believe. And thanks to Stephanie, we get to do a lot of do cool stuff down here in Delaware County. And it's amazing to see how many species actually do live here so close to Philadelphia. But um, Pennsylvania is at about 80 species of herps. That's uh, frogs, salamanders, lizards, snakes, and turtles. Um, this corner has about, Delaware County is about 40 species, I would say. There's 42 in Chester, 40 here, relatively speaking, that we know of. Um, through the, through the, um, the, the program, we've had documented things we haven't seen in 60 years in Southeast Pennsylvania. So it's really cool to see. Um, we will walk through the park. We will look at look for different species. We'll turn over rocks and logs, but we'll be careful to put you know put them back how we found them. If we find an animal, take the animal out, put it log back, and allow the animal to get underneath so you don't crush it. Um, you know, we pick something up, see a snake, we'll slam it down and say, "Snake, please don't do that." <laughs> here, Pennsylvania has three venomous species of snakes. Let me know what they are. Copperhead, timber rattlesnake, and eastern side. Awesome, yeah, you got it, you nailed them. And none of them live in Delaware County. Okay, I'll tell you that. But, and there's no venomous water snakes in Pennsylvania, okay? I, I usually lead off with that, but I feel you all already know that already. Okay, good job. You wanna pick that up, put that in that container? All right, so, thank you. You know what it is? Uh, is that a dusky salamander? It is not a dusky, although it is the same coloration as a dusky. This is actually, I'll give you a hint, it doesn't look like its name right now because there's a couple different phases. This is what you used to see in your yard all the time. Oh. They, they, uh, this is actually looks like a gravid female, she's a little plump. Uh, but So this is as big as they get, right? This is a um, eastern redback. Uh, they're probably the most common amphibian or, or herp species in the state of Pennsylvania. Where they live, um, as far as total numbers, they usually outnumber any other vertebrate where they're found, because they're just found everywhere. Now, they disappear in the warmer months when it gets drier. They can go through a good subterranean, but they can probably be found in most, most of these logs. You can probably find a redback. We'll see if we can find a red, regular redback phase. This is called the lead phase of a redback. It doesn't have a redback. Um, is that seasonal thing or age? Uh, excuse me? In other words, is it, is it seasonally they change their spots or is it as they end? That's, That's a good way. question, but no. no. <coughs> I could get this phase in the same cl uh, clutch of babies or red dot phase. It's, it, he's always been this color. Uh -huh. It does not change. Oh, yeah, he, he won't change. Mm -hmm. um, the, the particular species, this is a lungless salamander, so it doesn't, so it doesn't have lungs. And what do we know about amphibians? This one breathes through skin. So what do we know about amphibians? What, what does amphibian mean? They're n near water, they need water. Okay. Water and land. Water and, water and land. land. Okay, it means dual lives, basically, right. because they have a larval stage, right. then they metamorphose, we all know what that is, right? Yeah. And then they become adults, right? Um, so salamanders, most of the salamanders will have eggs near water or in water. They'll hatch in the, in the water's larvae, then they develop and they come out on land or some, some of them actually stay in, in near the water. Um, but this one doesn't follow the rules, which I found, so, you know, they don't read guidebooks, so <laughs> these actually don't have a larval stage. These actually have, um, I shouldn't really touch this because my hands are dry, oh. you know, and by touching that I can be removing the oils and it actually suffocates, so I'm not going to touch them. But um, they actually will have uh, the lay eggs, the mother will stay with the eggs and kind of guard them. Um, and when they hatch, they hatch into tiny little babies. These never go in the water. These, are, these never, these do not need that, don't need a water, body of water in which to breathe, which makes them cool. In a nice damp forest where, you know, you see how moist it was underneath the log, um, 
But you can pass those around and look at them. They go under, under the ground. Do they hibernate? They do hibernate. Well, what's, what's unique about these salamanders is that when per people like me who are starving to see some wildlife, the first warm, if it's not, if you don't have permafrost, and it's like any, if it's above 40 degrees, I can go flip a log and find a redback pretty much all year round if it's warm enough. Eastern garter snake. Now, eastern garter snakes are probably the most common snake in Pennsylvania. Um, uh, they live just about anywhere. There's woods and, and water. They do need water. They do feed on. He will feed on the eastern redbacks. He will feed on frogs. Um, they do eat mice, but they're not mouse eaters. People think they are, they're around the house. They eat the mice. That's probably not true. Um, they're not natural mouse eaters. They're not constrictors. Um, one thing that's fascinating about garter snakes, and several of our species in the state, is that they are not egg layers. They give birth to live babies. Okay, they'll, they'll, the babies will develop inside in a little uh, little amniotic sac, and she'll squirt them out, and probably have you know a snake that size could have maybe 12 to 20 babies. And how uh, long do they get, Kyle? What's well, so so that's an that's an adult. Uh -huh. That's not going to get too much bigger. But there are races. Like you go some places where they, 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 the average is a little bigger, yeah. they could be four feet. Uh -huh. Is a big garter snake. Yeah, that's a that's a decent size. That's a normal size adult, and that probably won't get too much longer than that. Is that like eighteen inches? That's eighteen to twenty-four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's a good size. Adult. It's hard to tell with all the leaves and everything. Yeah, that's, that's a good size adult. Very good eye. Thanks for spotting that. Really yeah. spotted that. You see, there's actually a seep in here. It's actually the water coming out of the hillside from the neighborhood seeping down to here feeds the creek, so there's some species that kind of like this habitat, like the northern dusky, right, this should be here. Um, and then by the stream, we'll flip some rocks, see if we can find a, a, a northern two-line salamander also, we'll see if we can find those. So uh, I'm gonna go down here and start flipping some things. You guys are welcome to look under stuff. Another practice I try to do when flipping over stuff, some of these some of these rocks and logs have been here for years, and they haven't been flipped. So there's actually a little uh, micro habitat under there. As soon as we flip it, that whole habitat is changed. It's necessary when you're doing a presence absence survey. You got to still look for things. What we try to do is try to pack that whatever leaves it might be around or dirt back around us. So you get that seal back in there again as well. Oh, you found it under a rock. That's pretty cool. That's crazy. It's actually, so look at this, if we don't scare it, we get a picture. It's actually a northern green frog. Oh, nice. And we can tell the difference because of those two ridges down the side of the back. You see the ridges? Yep. Bullfrogs don't have those ridges. Oh, well done, Matthew. Good job. Yeah, they do. Well, do. you know, the coldest of the 90s probably been under there. I hope not later. But they could be, that's very, that's a typical color. They could be all green, they could be all brown. Uh, mm -hmm. That brownish part on the back, that's that mud, that's his actual color. No, it's his actual color. <laughs> <laughs> See, then I looked at him and I scared the heck out of him. Well, this answers my question. Proper way to catch a frog, right around the hips. Hey, buddy. Look at his golden eyes. So, this here, that would appear to be a female, look at the tympanum, which is the ear on the side. But that was a huge tympanum, bigger than the eye, I would say it was a male. It looks like a female. How do you know if there was a dual color because she's oh, yeah. the mud, but that's yeah. actually the color. But you can see the, uh, right, that's the color. But you can see the ridges down the side, both fronts don't have that. And, uh, oh, there's one, again. Another one? Oh, it's not everywhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, so you got a couple species here. Right, right, right in view, there's a couple of them. That one in the middle there, the little one with the spots, that's a pickerel frog. Oh. Pickerel frog. And the pickerel frogs have two rows of squarish spots. They could have three. Sometimes the spots are fused into a racing stripes, I call them. Uh, very common. Uh, they got the coolest call, kind of like, sounds like your grandpa snoring. Really neat call they have. Uh, green frogs, I don't know where it went, but they uh, they actually sound like, uh, they, we, some people call them banjo frogs, because they're like a, a muted banjo string, uh, string being plucked. Um, you come down here at night, you might hear pickerels and greens and bulls. So this is the gusty we're talking about. 
um, different species. All right, this, this is a young adult, northern dusky salamander. They spend most of their time under logs in mud. Oh, yes. Um, another lungless salamander. Um, these do have egg, these do lay eggs and they do have larvae. The larvae are pretty small when they hatch. Uh, and then they'll just develop into, into the uh, young adults and come out. But they, uh, they get about four or five inches long. Four or five inches? That, that's a small one. Yeah. Oh, wow, they, they get cool. about, thinking about that long. One thing you'll notice about some of these salamanders, the salamanders are more aquatic, will have a knife-like tail for locomotion when they're in the water. They're very fast, too, so it's a very good time. That's what I expected cool. to see in these rocks. Yeah. So if you slip any of these other rocks, you'll probably find another dusky salamander. Are sal salamanders in the, in the uh, same family as uh, lizards, or are they completely different? Salamanders are amphibians. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Lizards are reptiles. And the biggest difference is yeah. scales. There's no scales on an amphibian. Oh, okay. Um, you know, lizards have scales, right. they have ears. Right. You know, different, they're, they're reptiles. Well, Right, so this is what's coming out the side of the hill. So normally what I'll do is this water, um, I'm not sure about this particular place, but there are some streams that I go to that never freeze. Yeah. It's maybe 50, the groundwater in Pennsylvania is usually around 54, 55, yeah. 6 degrees. Amphibians know this, like pickerel frogs. I can go to any, I can be, my record's 8 degrees for some yeah. reason. I went out looking for reptiles and amphibians. And you go to a spring head where it doesn't freeze and you flip rocks oh, and you'll see. that one. And you'll see. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so I'll go to the heads of the streams and I'll find a lot of amphibians hanging out in all winter because they overwinter under these things. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh, this is what I wanted to see oh, my whole life. Oh my so, god, look how big it is. This is, this, oh is, this, is, this is a rather old adult. Yeah. They start out as mm -hmm. basically basically white larvae. You know, oh, when they're, when they're born, but they're whoa, spotted. Whoa, and they have whoa. and they have they have long uh, gills, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. They're bright red when they're juveniles. They're really pretty. Wait, wait, can I show adults. your picture? Wow. She goes to oh, a camp. You got a, a red aphid. Yeah, so red aphid, okay. which is also oh, beautiful. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh. This is, a, yeah, this is, like I was saying to Stephanie, if they're red salamander, they should be here. Yeah, because of, the, because of the good water that's coming out of the bank here. Wow. So, yeah, this one here, um, yeah, this is actually looks like a big female. Um, as they age, they go from that brilliant red with spots, they start to actually turn purple. Yeah, they get they kind of get ugly, but they're still beautiful. You know what I mean. But the colors get a little, yeah. little, 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 little different. Anytime you have good springs like this, you should have red cells, which has been perplexing us for years here because we should have had them. But I just so happy to see wow. this here. Yeah, it's so good. You want to pass them around? Go ahead. I'm going to resubmit that. I like their eyeballs. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll get a better picture of this. And thing. would you call that a, a spring okay. here because it's like really flowing? Mm -hmm. I, I would call it spring seep. Okay. Uh, I don't. This is always or perpetual running. Mm -hmm. I'm so getting, yeah, I'm just it's thinking it's of you. I want to get yeah, it back. So you'll probably, you can find these things here in the winter also. This probably never gets mm -hmm. snow on it. Oh Almost yeah, never. Um, this oh, is what I look for when I go when I get desperate and I go herping in the winter time. Mm -hmm. I'll look for seeps. I'll go if it's a snow covered area. I look for a place where there's no snow. That's a big door. He probably had a meal, you think? He, absolutely. <laughs> you notice how the skin, when it stretches out, changes the pattern? Yeah. So what they'll do is, when they're angry, they'll also do that same thing, and they'll flatten their head. Oh, bye-bye. Oh, he's chonking. So if I were to pick that thing up, what's the first thing you think it's going to do? Well, besides bite. Besides poop. I think yeah. it, it might It might regurgitate, and then just ruin his meal. Yeah. Um, but that's a, got a nice, good-sized frog in there. That's, that's pretty neat. They usually swallow them whole? They will swallow anything whole. Yeah. All snakes will swallow things whole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
this hurdle on the log. Thanks. There's one right there. The water snake over here in the rocks. Keep looking. <laughs> All right, in the middle of the rocks, there's a vine that comes down a little bit. There's a little Y in the vine. He's about uh, two, three feet from the top in dead center. Oh, I see him. The biggest one. Is that the water? Oh, I see. I see. You see him? And there's actually a green algae covered rock. You see him? Yeah. He's big. Actually, he's kind of, he's uh, probably a small male. He's probably an adult also. Now, they get fairly big. Water snakes can get about, water snakes can get about 48 inches. Most of the, most of the time, the average small, but they're usually pretty stocky. The females are, are, are bigger. If that snake was wet, you'd see a nice brilliant pattern with rust and reds and browns that would be all, all muddy like that. They have to sitting out in the sun just kind of with the dry dirt on his back. Uh, what, what do you first notice in this pond? Uh, see, I always look for turtles. Painted turtle, painted turtle. A whole bunch of turtles on that log over there. Oh, there's a baby, very painted turtle right there. Something's going along there. That's a big snappy turtle. There's, actually, there's another one. There's actually a few of them yeah, out there. Yeah, there's a really big one I could see. This there's one, there's one whose head is sticking out in the middle over there. Oh, yeah. Big snappers in here. Yeah. There's somebody right there. Let me see if I can catch whatever that is down there. So what does that tell us? If snappers are there, does that tell us that we have a fairly good fish population? Uh, snappers can just about anything. Does that mean we have missing children? <laughs> good. Or, or if you don't want any. 47 turtles, okay. Wow. 47 turtles. All right, we'll talk about this girl right here. What's that? No, actually, this is an eastern painted turtle. Probably our most common pond turtle. It is our most common pond turtle found throughout the state. Um, they are native, of course. This is an eastern eastern painted turtle. This, this is a, an adult female. I can tell it's a female because she has shorter claws. The males have Freddy Krueger claws, which are really long. That's really? how it is. So, and, it, and they're usually a little bit smaller, but this is a good-sized female. And you've already seen the baby, but you can see how, how patterned she is. She's got the striped, striped pants, another good indicator this is a painted turtle. Very common. Oh, look at that underneath, how red that is. Isn't that yeah. pretty? Yeah, brilliant. Wow, that's amazing. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they crane their head really far back, are they? do they have a sense of gravity of what's up and what's down, or are they just trying to get away? <laughs> That's actually a very good question. Yeah. Um, so if you were to put this turtle and, let's say, a, a box turtle on a table, and you walk away, who do you think is going to fall off first? The box turtle, right? No. These things have an instinct that if they drop off of something, they're going to hit water. Ah. They don't care where they're at. They're gonna fall, jump in. The, they think they're gonna fall in water either oh, way. Dear. Box turtles are terrestrial, ah. so they're a little more cautious about where they're gonna put the edge feet, of right? the so edge of the You put her anywhere, she's just gonna go and flop. Interesting. Well, that's right. there. You go. Wow. The pretty girl. So we uh, we actually have two subspecies in the state, and they're kind of hard to, you know, people the naked eye wouldn't be able to tell. It's all about their scoot arrangement. These things have a scoot, which is pretty much in line going across these lines here their scoots are these plates on the back in a midland painted turtle they alternate it's but you know we don't expect you all to see you know that. how you spell that scoot s-c-u-t-e yes i thought so okay and what is and cooter is a variation a, a cooter is a more of a southern term there's a large large race a large genus of turtles with pseudomies and they are here is uh, the northern red belly turtle or red belly cooter mm -hmm. as you go south the large pond turtles are usually called cooters now this is, remember what this, this is called? What's this called? Uh, it's the carapace. It's carapace and? Plastron. Plastron, very good. Mm. Right? Mm. Good job. Amazing. Oh boy. What, what, yeah, what are peepers? Are peepers like tadpoles or just, have just turned into frogs? No, actually peepers are a separate species of, of frog. They're actually a chorus frog. Very successful, did a lot of wetlands, very, very common. Did you say chorus? They are a, a the genus is a chorus frog genus, Sudacris. Okay. Uh, Sudacris crucifer. I mean, they're called crucifer because they usually have an X on their back. Uh huh. Uh, but they're they're another one of their explosive breeders. You'll hear them around here tonight. Yeah, see, have you heard them here, at Stephanie? Yes. Peepers. Only like once or twice. Actually, yeah, they're not, not, not really not night. really strong here, but uh, in some places, like even, even retention ponds and stuff like that. I, 
you drive down the road and you see like yeah. cattails or phragmites where you have water, you might have peepers breeding yeah. in there. Very loud, very raucous, but they only get about an inch long. Yeah, yeah. okay. And they're but adults I, like that. I did hear the spring call a minute ago. Did you hear it? To the left, yeah. There's a pickerel frog yeah. in there. That's a, that's a pickerel frog calling in there. That's a full snore. Not very loud. It doesn't carry very far. No, yeah. So you have to be right on top of it. But I've been somewhere that like, that's all you hear is one after the other. <laughs> For the most part, these turtles uh, are carnivorous. They're carnivorous. Okay. Now, red belly sliders and, I mean, red belly cooters and the red ear sliders are here. Red red ear sliders are, are omnivores. They'll eat anything, including right. the duckweed. Right. Um, cooters are more um, herbivores. Uh -huh. And that's, that's the problem because then they get out competing. Okay. Not to say they won't pick up something and eat it. There's some other, right. they all need protein, so they right. make something else. The uh, snapper turtles prey on any of the other turtles? The snapping turtles will prey on these turtles, yeah. Especially, especially uh, of appropriate size. So you got two red sliders which don't belong. That awesome. Is. And thank you very much for posing for us, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. All the snapping turtles need air, right? They all need air. So they Correct. spend most of their time with just their little snout yes, hanging yeah. out. And yes. it, usually in the middle? Uh, they'll, they'll probably come to the edge of the night to feed. Oh, I would love to come and see. Uh, I'd come down here and I would have flashed You'd probably see them real easy. <laughs> now these turtles will, they, of course, they overwinter in the, in, under the water. And they are, you know, they're, they're, um, their vitals all go down, their heart rate goes down, and they'll, they're, they're able to absorb oxygen through their skin at that point. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, they usually see you before you see them. It went up there somewhere. Oh, I got him. Look at that guy. He's huge. Oh my god. He's huge. Mm. Alright, that, that's a big, big female. Northern green frog. She's big. She's a big one. Stephanie, what are we up to? Uh, species. Species. I think we're up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I've got, um, let's see, well, these aren't going to be all grouped together, but so Eastern Redback, huh? Garter Snake, Green Frogs, Pickerel, Northern Duskies, Red Salamanders, Red Eared Sliders, Red Belly Sliders, Painted Turtles, Snappers, Bullfrogs, El Yellow, Belly. Just get outside, document stuff. Um, be mindful of the environment, don't pollute, um, uh, be considerate of um, you know, even things you don't like, like snakes and spiders, they're still living organisms, they all deserve our respect, and they all deserve a right to live, so thank you.